Creating menus using menu strip. Everyone should be familiar with menus. Menus are those that allow us to make a selection when we want to perform some action with the application. For example, to format the text, open a new file, to print, and so on. The menu strip control is new to this version of Visual Studio and the .NET framework. With the control, you can easily create menus like those found in Microsoft Office. The menu strip control supports the multiple document interface, otherwise known as the MDI, and menu merging, tooltips, and overflow. You can enhance the usability and readability of your menus by adding access keys, shortcut keys, check marks, images, and separator bars. The menu strip control replaces and adds functionality to the main menu control. Let's work with the menu strip control. Create a new Windows application and name it Menu Strip. Click the form in the Forms Designer and set the following properties of the form. Drag a menu strip control from the toolbox and drop it onto your form. It is automatically positioned at the top of your form. The control is also added to the bottom of the development environment. In the Properties window, set the font to Segoy UL, the font style to Regular, and the size to 8. Right-click the Menu Strip 1 control on the form and select the Insert Standard Items Context Menu Item to have the standard menu items automatically inserted. In the Properties window, click the Ellipses Dots button next to the Items property or right-click on the Menu Strip control in your form and choose Edit Items from the Context menu. In the Items Collection Editor dialog box, click the Add button to add a new menu item. To be consistent with the current naming standard already in use with the other menu items, set the name property for this new menu item to View Tool Strip Menu Item. Now set the text property to ampersand view. An ampersand in the menu name provides an access key for the menu or menu item. The letter before which the ampersand appears is the letter used to access this menu item in combination with the alt key. So for this menu, you'll be able to access and expand the view menu by pressing alt V. You'll see this when you run your project later. You want to position this menu between the edit and Tools menu, so click the up arrow to the right of the menu items until the View menu is positioned between the Edit Tool Strip Menu Item and Tools Tool Strip Menu Item in the list. Now, locate the drop down items property and click the ellipses dots button next to it so that you can add menu items beneath the View menu. A second Items Collection Editor appears, and its caption reads Items Collection Editor. View Tool Strip Menu Item dot drop down items. There's only one menu item under the View menu, and that is Toolbars. Click the Add button in the Item Collections Editor to add a menu item. Again, you want to be consistent with the naming standard already being used, so set the name property to Toolbar Tool Strip Menu Item, and then set the text property to Tool Ampersand Toolbars. You want to add two sub-menu items under the Toolbars menu item. So locate the drop-down items property and click the ellipses button next to it. In the Item Collections Editor, click the Add button to add a new menu item. Set the name property for this sub-menu item to Main Tool Strip Menu Item and the text property to Ampersand Main. When you add a toolbar to this project, it is displayed by default. So this submenu item should be checked to indicate that the toolbar is displayed. Set the checked property to true to cause this submenu item to be checked by default, and the check on click property also to true to allow the check mark next to this submenu item to be toggled on and off. The next submenu item that you are adding is formatting. Click the add button to add a new menu item and set the name property for this submenu item to Formatting Tool Strip Menu Item and the text property to Ampersand Formatting. Since this toolbar is not shown by default, you need to leave the checked property set to false. You do, however, need to set the Check on Click property to true 
so that the submenu item can toggle the check mark on and off. Keep clicking the OK button in the items collection editors until all of the editors are closed. Now then, run the application by pressing F5 and then enter Alt plus V and Alt plus T without releasing the Alt key and you'll see the submenu items. You can also click the other menus and see their menu items as well. Context Menu Strip Control Context menus are menus that pop up when a user clicks the right mouse button on a control or window. Visual Studio 2008 provides a context menu strip control that you can place on your form and customize, just as you did the menu strip control. However, the main difference between the menu strip control and the context menu strip control is that you can create only one top-level menu with the context menu strip control. You can still create a submenu items with the context menu strip if you need to. Now let's work with a sample, shall we? Create a new Windows application. Drag and drop a context menu strip control from the toolbox. Click on the context menu strip control to open the editor at the top of the form. In the type here box, enter cut, copy, paste. Cut is assigned menu item 1. Copy with menu item 2 and paste with menu item 3. Drag and drop two rich text boxes onto the form. Place your mouse on the form and press F4 to open its property window. In the property window, select the context menu property and set it to context menu 1. Similarly, change the same for both the rich text boxes. This sample application allows you to enter some text into rich text box 1. Select some text, cut copy the selected text and paste it in rich text box 2. It is similar to the right-click menu with which you work in other Windows applications. The whole design looks like this. Now select Context Menu in that and then double-click on Cut. Doing that opens up its menu item click event. Paste this line of code within it. Similarly, paste the appropriate code for the other two events, Copy and Paste. Now run the application by pressing F5. Type your text into the rich text box 1 and now select the text you want to copy. After selecting, right-click your selection. That opens up the context menu. In that, click on copy. Now move your pointer to rich text box 2 and right-click your mouse and select paste. Doing that, paste the selected text from rich text box 1 to rich text box 2. Similarly, try whether cut condition is working or not. Open Dialog Control A lot of Windows applications process data from files, so you need an interface to select files to open and save. The .NET Framework provides the Open File Dialog and Save File Dialog classes to do just that. In this section, we're going to discuss about the Open File Dialog Control. When you use Windows applications, such as Microsoft Word or Paint, you see the same basic Open Dialog box. There's a standard set of application programming interfaces, known as API, available to every developer. Fortunately, all of this functionality is already built into the .NET framework, so you can use it as you develop with Visual Basic 2008. Here's a list of the methods available in Open File Dialog. Dispose. This releases the resources used by the Open Dialog box. Open File opens the file selected by the user with read-only permission. The file is specified by the file name property. Reset resets all properties of the open dialog box to their default values. And show dialog. This shows the dialog box. Let's work with a sample. The scenario here is to display the open file dialog box. We have to use the dialog box to locate and select a text file and then read the contents of the file into a text box on our form. Create a new Windows application and name it Open Dialog. To rename our form in the Solution Explorer, right-click on Form1.vb 
and choose Rename from the context menu. Then enter a new name of Dialogues.vb. Set the properties of the form such as this. Set size to 46300, set start position to center screen, and set text to Dialogues. Because we're going to read the contents of a file into a text box, we have to add a text box to the form. We also need a button control to the form so that we can invoke the Open File dialog box. Add these two controls to the form and set the properties according to the following list. Name the text box TXT file and set the following properties. Anchor equals top, bottom, left, right. Location equals 13, 13. Multiline equals true. Scroll bars equal vertical. And size equals 330, 232. Name the button control BTN Open and set the following properties. Anchor equals top, right, location equals 349, 13, text equals open. After completing all the preliminary settings, our form should look like this. In the toolbox, scroll down until the Open File Dialog Control in the Dialogs tab and then drag it into your form and then drop it. The control will actually be added to the bottom of the workspace in the IDE. Switch to the code editor for the form. Then declare a string variable that will contain a file name. We'll set this variable later in code to the actual path and file name from the open file dialog box. Now double click the BTN open button control and paste this code in its click event. Now then it's time to use some of the pre-built code snippets that come with Visual Studio 2008. Right-click in the blank space inside the Try Block statement right before the Catch Block statement and choose Insert Snippet from the Context menu. In the drop-down menu that appears, double-click Fundamentals, Collections, Data Types, File System, Math. And then in the new list, double-click File System, Processing Drives, Folders, and Files. And then, finally, scroll down the list and double-click Read text from a file. Your code should look new like this, and you'll notice that the file name is highlighted, indicating that this code needs to be changed. Modify the code in the Try block, such as this. Now then, run the application by pressing F5. Click the Open button to have the Open File dialog box displayed. Notice the custom caption in the title bar of the dialog box. You specify this in your code. If you click the File Filter combo box, you will see two filters. Now then, locate a text file on your computer and select it. Then, click the Open button to have the file opened and the contents of that file placed in the text box on the form. Right then, let's discuss how this works. The first property that we set is the Filter property. This property enables us to define the filters that are displayed in the file filter combo box at the bottom right hand of the dialog. To specify file extension filter, we have to use a vertical bar followed by a file extension. The next property that we set is the filter index property. This property determines which filter is shown in the file filter combo box. The default value for this property is 1, which is the first filter. Finally, we're setting up the title property. That is the caption that is displayed in the title bar of the dialog box. To show the open file dialog box, we're using the show dialog method. Remember that the show dialog method returns a dialog result value. And there are only two possible results, OK or Cancel. Next, we are adding a try catch block to handle any errors that may occur while opening a file. Inside the try block, we retrieve the path and file name that the user has chosen in the open file dialog box and set it in our str file name variable. The path and file name are contained in the file name property of the open file dialog control. Next, we use the built in code snippets provided by Visual Studio 2008 to simplify our programming tasks by using the read text from a file code snippet. This snippet contains the necessary code to read the contents from a text file and to place those contents in a string variable. Then we modify the code from the code snippet supplying the str file name variable in the highlighted section of code. This code will read the entire contents of the text file into the file contents variable. 
The final line of code that we wrote takes the contents of all text variable and sets it into the text property of the text box control, thereby populating the text box with the contents of your text file.